Hey guys, this is Billy Davison with Davison Pressure Washing and Painting, operating uh, out of Hammond, Louisiana. I wanted to make this uh, this video, uh, kind of explaining how you would plumb the um, the the buffer tank uh, with a feed line uh, running to um, one of these uh, eight gallon per minute power washers. This is something that you would want to do uh, using a buffer tank uh, anytime you have a power washer. That, that pulls at least eight, uh, eight gallons a minute. Uh, some people even do it uh, when the power washers pull as little as six gallons per minute because it's hard to you know get that kind of flow out of uh, a spigot. So a buffer tank would be necessary. These two particular machines uh, pull eight gallons per minute each. So when both of them is running, uh, you're getting uh, approximately about 16 gallons a minute draw out of this buffer tank. Of course, you would have to feed the uh, the buffer tank uh, with a couple different water hoses coming from different locations. So I wanted to show uh, the best way I have found to plumb these uh, these water tanks to the power washer. You may find a different uh, setup that works better. Um, you, maybe this will give you some ideas. Basically, what we have here, <clears throat> um, let me first start out with saying I have turned my tote um, to the side. You know, depending on how wide your trailer is, um, I think this trailer is five feet wider, but I'm not positive about it. Basically, I had to turn my tank to the side to be able to um, to get enough room to do it. So I got about this much space on each side of the tank. Uh, same thing on this side. <clears throat> you know, there's a little space over there as well. But you can you can also push this tank over to one side to give you a little bit more room on your uh, valve side here. So it is real simple <clears throat> to make it the simplest possible to take up take up less room. This is your um, your valve here, and this is uh, this is in the open position, and of course that's in a closed position, and you have a a ball valve or a butterfly in there that actually stops the water flow. So for these purposes, I'll just leave it closed. This is how your tote comes <clears throat> um, from the factory. This is a two inch threaded male end. And most of them are exactly like this, a pretty standard. So what we do is um, we use a sleeve. <clears throat> this sleeve is smooth on one end, um, on the, the female end. And um, so on, on this other side, this is a threaded female end. So it would actually slip. Let's see if I can get this done with one hand holding the, this phone as well. So I just basically screw this on. And I leave all my attachments loose where I can um, undo them to drain the tank or to flush the tank or make any hose repairs. So I don't use any thread locks or any glue. And actually, <clears throat> these are cheap enough. Sometimes you drop them and crack them or whatever. It's best to have three or four on in the toolbox. It's, you know, a dollar each or whatever. So it's good to have. So this is also the feed line going to um, one of the, the power washers. Three-quarter inch hose with, um, I'm not quite sure what this nipple is called, but this nipple screws into this piece. Um, no, like again, no, um, no glue, no thread lock. I can unscrew that. Um, and then my hose slips over this. And usually we have a hose clamp on this end to keep it from sucking air, but I just took that off a little while ago so I can, you know, show you that this, let me see if I can get this to pop off. Well, yeah, there we go. It's kind of hard to do this with one hand, but. So that would be basically the um, the little plumbing piece that you would need, and that just um, that actually has some threads or grooves in it, but it's not necessary. But the the end that screws into this white piece is the one that needs to have threads in it, and so I just slip this right back over the hose here. Like I said, I would normally have a hose clamp. Now this piece slips right into here. 
and um, now it's ready to go. Um, I would first I would flush the tank before I would hook this up, or if I want to drain the tank after a day of power washing, this just slips right out. So that would be my drain or my flush as well as well. Uh, if you use anything less than a two inch diameter for draining, it's going to take forever to drain this tank. So uh, that's what basically what I do. It just slips right in. Uh, once my tank is full, or you know at least three quarters full, or maybe 150 gallons in it, I'll open this valve. Uh, knowing that you're going to have air in this line, so the, the static water pressure in this tank will start to, uh, you know, gravity feed. So it would push down and make sure your valve is open. Boy, that is a real common mistake. People will start their power washer without this valve open. And these power washers have a, um, a long stroke pump, so they, they tend to siphon really hard. So it could collapse your hose, and more importantly, your pump will not be being fed water for those few moments until you realize it. So valve is open. The water is um, just gravity fed down into this hose, and these this bend here is actually okay. You know, it's um, it's not too aggressive. If you have a um, pretty rigid hose where it's not going to collapse on itself from the siphon suction, um, that should be fine. So this hose goes all the way back around to that power washer and I'll walk around here to show you so that's where it is and it feeds right into here and then into the um into the pump itself right below the unloader and that that works perfect as long as you don't have no air leaks or uh, water leaks. So if you don't have any water leaks, it, undoubtedly you, you will not get air into the line either. Now once uh, I have water flow, have that valve open on that side, water flows to come to here. But it's just not enough static pressure to bring the um, to push water out of the unloader here, right here. So you may still have some air in the pump. So normally what I'll do without the pressure hose attached, I will go ahead and start the engine on idle. You know, make sure it's all, all the way idle down, start the engine, and within a few seconds you should get a good stream of water coming out. Maybe let that run for a few moments just to make sure you got all the air purged out of the pump. And kill the engine, snap your pressure hose onto here. If you're using a downstreamer, that would also go in into this point and perhaps to a hose reel and then out to the gun if you're using a hose reel. But make sure this connection is solid, it's snapped in all the way because um, once you crank the pressure washer up at 24 horsepower, 8 gallons per minute, right at 3000 PSI or 3500 PSI, there is a lot of force on this connection here. As you're standing here, by the by the uh the, by the key here to start it bending over with your face near here if this connection pops loose you're probably going to lose some teeth and so you always want to make sure this is a make as a positive connected snaps in place tug on it visually look at it if it's at night time shine a light on it make sure that that collar is pushed all the way forward there has been a couple times that this has popped off on me and uh, I was lucky. It, it popped off and hit the frame of this trailer reel here, right here. And I was okay, but it sure did scare the heck out of me. Um, so, lesson learned. Make sure you snap that in all the way. Um, every time, don't don't forget about it. Don't, don't get sidetracked. Don't halfway put it in there. That connection, you know, probably weighs several ounces. Um, you know, probably right at a pound even. Maybe 10, 12, 15 ounces. And it pops off there with a force, um, you know, hits you in the face or something. It definitely hurts you. So I'm going to show um, one other example how now that's running only one single power washer. Obviously, we got two power washers here. So I'm going to show you my other apparatus that I use to feed both power washers from this same, from this one tote. And um, so basically I would slip this off. 
see if I can get it to pop off. So that's popped off. And I use this piece of two inch PVC pipe. Again, no glue. Let's see if I can get, get it on camera as well. I know it's hard to hold the camera and do this with one hand, so sorry about the. So once I got it snapped in, it's not all the way snapped in right now because I can only use it in one hand, but once I got that um, pushed in all the way, I take my the hose that was on there before, and now this hose feeds this power washer. This line that I'm tracing with my fingers, make sure I got the right one, yeah, comes all the way back into here into the bottom of this power washer same thing you get your quick connection there for your pressure hose or a downstream injector like we talked about on the other one make sure it's connected very securely this um this radius is fine uh, it's not too too aggressive and again the hose is that non-collapsible collapsible hose so it's reinforced so it it holds up just fine with the siphon and for the other power washer, <clears throat> I will go ahead and push this into this T. See so if I can get it. Okay, once it's you know snugged in there, uh, make sure my valve is open on that end. Still, and so now this this pipe is feeding both power washers. Now this hose is kind of kinked up, so what I'll do. I will, if you're going to run two power washers off of it, I will pull it out, sort of kind of out the edge of the trailer over there. Let me see if I can walk over here and get that done to show you how I do it. You know, if I'm not traveling with it, um, I'll make sure, you know, it's got a, just a slight radius bend in it that's fine and most of the time that's how it's hanging off the trailer while we sit and still running both power washers <laughs> and that seems to you know to work pretty pretty well for me so far no problems um you know with running two power washers off of one tote the only other thing if you're running two power washers you really got to feed the heck out of this tank with a couple spigots because like i said you're pulling 16 gallons per minute and um, it would just draw this tank down fairly rapidly. <clears throat> My connection done slipped off here. Once um, <clears throat> once you got all that set up, you're good to go. You know, again on this power washer, you would purge it for air, the same as we talked about that other one. And I believe I have another video here on this channel showing how you you purge them. Um, the one other thing, this uh, this two inch pipe is a necessity. You wouldn't want to use anything smaller than that, um, because you know, like I said, you you run an eight uh, two power washers at sixteen gallons per minute. So this two inch pipe is necessary. You wouldn't want to go with anything smaller than that. Uh, if you could uh, put a two and a half inch pipe here, that would be fine. You know, either way. Now some guys I have seen. Um, do it a little bit different. They'll actually, let me take this off so I show you. They actually plumb this thing straight down in the floor, hard plumbing uh, with a rigid pipe like a PVC. So they put a hole in the floor, elbow it down, and under the trailer, you know, the connections would run under the trailer, um, against on the bottom side of the, um, the floor here and they would of course you know c clamp it to the floor or have you know fasten it to the floor and then pigtail it up at some point and uh you know run the two power washers with the pvc um i mean not uh, off of the off of the rigid pvc and with the flex lines and then down here they would also <clears throat> have a uh a t-valve set up where they can just turn in a certain way like a three-way valve to dump the tank out if they you know if that's what they needed to do